day, what the people in the middle want are elected officials that are local, experienced professionals. Maka Dingra's victory in the 2017 special election for state Senate was a tipping point for Washington politics, giving Democrats control of the state Senate, House, and governor's office for the first time in years. So we can actually govern next year, and that's what people want. Her hard-fought win gave the King County prosecutor and political novice a crash course in how dirty local politics can get. Manga Dingra and her extreme liberal friends, Shama Sawant and Ed Murray, are trying to force their Seattle values on the east side. I mean, I'm a prosecutor. I'm a pretty tough person, but that's still not okay. It's a brand of political divisiveness she vowed to rise above. We respond with love. We respond with integrity, with honesty, and a commitment to solving problems together. During her first year and a half in office, Senator Dingra's priorities have not wavered. I've been working with the criminal justice system, mental health, domestic violence, and those are the issues that we are working on or struggling with as a state right now. And Senator Manka Dingra is here with us tonight to talk about some important issues in the news. Thank you for your time. We're Absolutely. glad to see you. All right, let's talk about gun violence because it is, of course, on the minds of so many of us, not just here in Washington, but across the country. I think people, Manka, are frustrated and they're scared and they're looking for action, not just in their communities, but also from their elected leaders. So what kind of action do you see uh, the legislature taking directly in response to what we've seen happen in communities lately? You know, I have two teenagers, and I have to say, as a parent, it is so scary to send our kids to school these days. And I was one of the first candidates in the state of Washington to run on a um, gun violence prevention platform. For the last two years, the state of Washington has actually made really great strides in this area. This session alone, I had a bill that um, made sure that those individuals who've been charged with a crime have been found to be not competent to stand trial and have a history of violence, that they, we remove firearms from those individuals because we have to make sure we're looking at a history of violence. We had another great bill regarding domestic violence, making sure that when officers respond to a domestic violence situation, they can actually remove the firearms that are in that household because we do know that the lethality rate for victims of domestic violence goes up five times when there's a gun involved. We also made sure that we made uh, updates to our ERPO law. That's the extreme risk protection law that was passed by voters a few years ago. So really making sure that they apply to juveniles as well. We also made sure we're taking a look at technology and what's coming down the pike. So we had a bill banning uh, 3D printed guns, which really is something we all should be concerned about because we want to make sure we can detect firearms, especially at airports or courthouses. So the state of Washington has really stepped up this year and last year in making sure we are protecting our citizens in the state. Your counterparts in Washington, D.C. support bringing back the assault rifle ban that was installed in 1994. Is that something that you would support here and federally? You know, we've had um, our Attorney General Bob Ferguson, who has been behind the assault rifle ban. It was introduced last session as well as the session before, and we were simply not able to get this bill uh, passed through uh, the, uh, the Senate or uh, the House. We had a uh, gun initiative. And so any uh, bill regarding assault we uh, weapons could be seen as changing that initiative. So I, I would guess maybe not next year, but the year after when uh, we would be in a position to make changes to that initiative is most probably when we would see that happen. Is that something that you would support? Absolutely. You know, there is no reason for us to have military style weapons in today's day and age. Absolutely, people should go hunting. And in this area, you know, that's absolutely what people should be allowed to do. But we have to make sure that we're being practical. I don't know anyone who hunts with um, military-style uh, assault weapons. Let's talk about mental health because it is such a key component of this important discussion. You talked to our reporter, Hannah Kim, last month about the changing mental health care system, specifically in response to repeat offenders. And what you tried to do was to extend the involuntary commitment from 72 hours to five days. I want to briefly look at your reasoning behind that and your response. It takes about three to four, even five days for someone to kind of cleanse the system out of any drugs that they may be on.
So the bill passed in the Senate. It did not pass in the House. So what's your plan? Because obviously this is important to you. Absolutely. So I just want to make sure that since we're talking about guns and mental illness, that we're very clear that individuals who have mental health issues are more likely to be victims of crime than perpetrators of violence. And I know people tend to talk about the two together, and I really want to make sure we separate the two. Normally, the individuals who go on mass shootings have a history of domestic violence. That tends to be more of a common factor than the history of mental illness. We still have to make sure that we are taking care of individuals who are mentally ill in our system. And that means taking, taking, a, taking a look at the entire spectrum of care. So really taking a look at early intervention, making sure people can access treatment, and then going along that spectrum to take a look at civil commitment, and then taking a look at a forensic mental health system. So we did have a bill on forensic mental health that passed uh, both houses and was signed into law. My civil commitment bill, um, it ended up with a large fiscal note at the last minute. And so uh, that did not get through this session, but we will be introducing it again next session and hopefully we will get it passed. What will be your number one priority next session? I definitely will be looking at mental health and looking at the civil commitment bill. I do have a couple of bills taking a look at, you know, restoration of firearms, really making sure that those individuals who have already been convicted of a felony, if they use a weapon in the commission of that felony or have a history of domestic violence, really making sure we're being careful on who is getting those firearms restored because it really comes down to history of violence and access to weapons. Well, we know you have a full plate and you and your colleagues have a lot of important issues that are at stake. We appreciate you taking the time tonight to join us to discuss some of them. Monka Dingra, we appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Thank you. David, back over to you.